uh, today we are going to do a little bit of an intro into um, place fishing. So, start of the year now, spring's coming, place are showing up in small numbers around the country. We've had a few few show up locally here in, in Morecambe Bay. So, we thought, you know, we, we'd have a look at um, best tactics. Um, obviously, we've been talking about this between three or four of us in the shop over the last week of what the best tactics are for, for place fishing. And we've quite quickly come to the assumption that We've all got different ideas, but combined, it all sounded pretty good. So we thought maybe put a few of these ideas and practices into a little video, maybe to help you if you if you if you're new to place fishing or you want to try something different. Uh, a few top tips here. So uh, Darren's very very kindly um, agreed to come on the video with me and talk about it. He does more fishing, a lot more fishing than most people locally, and has been going for how many years now fishing? Too long? Too many? Well, I've worked here for 30, I've probably fished for, mm, yeah, a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so there's not many things he either hasn't tried or uh, he hasn't heard of. We get an awful, awful lot of angler, awful lot of anglers coming into the shop discussing how they're fishing, what works, what doesn't. So we'll get cracking. What I want to start first with really is uh, talking over a, a, a basic rig that Darren thinks is an absolute foolproof for, uh, for his place fishing. Um, I'll hand that over to him now and he'll just talk you through the basics of the rig. Right, so simplicity is the key with me. Either I'm lazy or I like my rigs to work. Um, if you keep them simple, generally they're working. So a lot of people who use bead, swivel, crimp, bead, swivel, crimp. I use simply crimps, which is basically a swivel captured on a crimp. It's just easy. Or I'm lazy again. Um, where I have my swivel on my mono, I have it in a loop. I have a loop tied and I push the loop to and pull the rig through. That just makes a little stiff boom. So it probably may not eliminate angles, but in my mind it does. Then I go down to, I have a little, very tight, you won't be able to see that, very tight little tronics. It's like a sausage shape stop sequin floating bead i like the green ones different yeah. people like different colors yeah. now i use quite a big hook for flies in the context of things i use a puma mantis size two quite a wide gape hook mm, pretty flexible people say oh why do you use such a big hook i don't like catching small fish not because of that i just think it eliminates from taking the hook down a little bit too much um, another key feature to my rig, that mono there is £30 oblivion. It's not £15, it's not very fine stuff, it's quite stiff. Again, to eliminate the tangles for me, I have quite short snoots, so when the rig's on the bottom, it's fluttering about, it's not too far away for the place to come to get the bait if it's floating, if it's not, it's nailed on the bottom. The top one's identical, very, very short, again, the same components, same hook simple swivel i don't clip it down i just leave it flapping because i'm not casting miles another key component is the lead i like these leads because they don't roll around but when i'm not getting bites i like to reel it in and drag it a little bit you can use pair lead, you can use um, sorry watch leads and things like that i use them because they look good that, that is something that i think all of us agreed on that rather than fishing a, a breakout lead with the wires is having a, a flat lead whether it be the pyramid lead like this, um, which these are obviously the, the brights, they're an attracting, which we'll come on to later, uh, or even just watch leads, or or in, in cert certain places in the country, you can get away with sort of rolling leads. Uh, most of our fishing here, the tide's a little bit too strong for that, and you end up just getting washed into snags. Um, the other part I think I think I, I think we need to mention about Darren's rig is is when he's fishing. I'm, I'm guessing you're not very tight. You don't keep it really tight, do you? You want these? No, these no. I have, I have, well. I have my rod. I don't have my line really like bolstering tight. I have me, I have my tip just feeling the lead. So I wind down a little bit, so my tip's just in contact with it. So when I get a bite, it does register. If I have it too tight, sometimes with the waves and things, it's dragging it. Which dragging it, you may get more bites, you may not. In my mind, I just like it just set so it's nice. I don't like it too tight. But again, I don't like it slack, so you're getting slack liners and your lines catching things in the tide. Yeah. It's just the way that I fish. Yeah. So, 
Um, I really like Darren's rig. Um, a key component I really like is, is, is the lower, lower, lower down parts of this. I always like, I always catch most of my place on the bottom, bottom, bottom uh, hook of the, of the two up rig. In my head, I think because the bait's closer to the floor, fishing it with a slightly slacker, um, uh, slacker drop, it's wafting around, especially with the, the, these um, these floating beads. I think you just you, you catch rate goes up. You see a lot of people they're fishing really tight to it. You've got two hooks much higher off the bottom. When targeting any flatty place, flounder, dabs, so you know most of the time they're on the bottom. Yeah, they they, they will come up in the water at times, but you know they're in their element, searching on the bottom for food. Um, that's almost an essential part of anyone's place rig. Um, as we go, just break Darren's rig down a little bit here. Something that is absolutely essential is is, is, is floating beads and attractants on rigs. I think you're speaking to any uh, good angler that targets a lot of flatties. Something bright on the end of your rig makes a huge difference. Darren swears by green beads, which a lot of people do. My personal favourites are the orange and the yellow ones. Um, don't ask me why. Um, I seem to catch more when I put them on. Darren catches more with the green ones, but we can both agree that a floating bead just above your bait does make a huge difference. Whether it's just lifting that bait so it so it's just sat on the bottom and it's just wafting about a little bit higher, or it's just the colour, I'm not so sure. Um, but you know, if you're tying some new rigs up for this spring, make sure you get some floating beads put on. And um, the next part is something that we get asked about all the time and so many people have different ideas about hooks. Darren has gone through his um, his hook choice there. Which specific hook is that you've used? That's a Sakum standard 540 Manta in a size two. Okay, cool. So my choice of hook is actually, I like these actually small little uh, Kamazan B900C crab hooks. Um, I quite like their offset. Um, the key part of, I think mo most, most people's um, Place hooks or flatty, rig, flatty hooks is they're quite soft. So if you, if you get one that swallows it quite far down, you can bend them out, pop the hooks out easily rather than losing your rig and obviously hurting the fish. Um, but going from there, probably the most sold hook we do is probably a B940 matchup for the exact reason obviously you've got a long shank that holds the bait presentation well, and again, it bends if you need to yank it out of the fish. The match guys absolutely love these when they're obviously trying to get as many fish in as they can, flat his place, uh, to get the length to ho hopefully win in the match because the speed that they can pop the hook out, get it rebated and cast it back in is quicker than most other rigs. Um, something else that we sell an awful lot of, it's something I I personally I haven't used or tried yet. Have, have you tried these circle hooks for place fishing? I've not used them for place fishing. I've been messing about over the winter time fishing dongle rigs for cod and link and um, thorn back rays and things like that and very very good the reason why a lot of people use them is so the fish don't deep hook them and if you've caught any number of flies you know yourself they do tend to swallow the bait before it registers on your rod that's the only probably downside of having your rod so not set so tight to your lead because they do take it you know they do take it down that's another video we'll probably have to do on how to disgorge flat fish we'll, we'll, we'll do another one on that another day um, but with circle hooks, what they tend to do is they tend to swallow the bait and when you strike into the fish, they tend not to hook until they're on the way out. They tend to catch the corner of the mouth on the way out. So when you're disgorging them, you don't have to be messing about with disgorges. You just flick them out with your pliers. They're a very good hook. I use them on my top hook for my pen rig for when I'm smooth out fishing and things like that. Yeah. And the hookup rate's phenomenal. 90% of my fish are hooked in the corner of the mouth on the circle, not on the bottom hook. So again, this year I'll probably fish the smooth hand on the dongle rig with a circle top hook yeah. and nothing on the bottom. Yeah, I use circles a lot of the time in my boat fishing, um, especially when you catch some of the larger shark species, you know, when the circle, the circle hooks near enough always turn into the mouth, uh, it just makes life a lot easier. So it makes sense, you know, I'm, I'm going to probably give, give it a go this season because it does make sense to try them. Um, obviously, if you're struggling a lot with a lot of deep, deep, deep hooked uh, flatties, you know, certainly worth a try in your rigs this season. Um, move, moving along on, on sort of rig design, rig design and, and components uh, is something which isn't used as much at the moment but can come into its own element is actually the snoop mono you use. So Darren talked there about using a £30 uh, standard clear snoop, snoop uh, to give it a bit of rigidity so his rig doesn't tangle. 
which is brilliant, especially in in, um, in strong running currents. Uh, if you're trying to cast a bit of a distance, obviously that can come into it, into its own. Something I've played around with when um, we have a lot more clear water, and I have seen improved catch rates actually using fluorocarbon as a snood. Um, I don't know how many people have played with fluorocarbon, but um, it's, it's an essential part of, of a lot of fishing these days, especially in, in clear water. Fluorocarbon is made in a different way to, um, to, to normal line, and it, without going into too much complication with it. Um, it, it basically, when it's in the water, it, it doesn't reflect the light, almost diffuses it, it the, the light actually gets diffused through it, so it almost becomes invisible. So when, when you're fishing places with a clean water, really clean water marks, the line's almost not there. So the, the fish is attracted to a bait, it's never going to be put off. Uh, I've had some definite uh, increased catch rates through the, the really calm parts of the year uh, for flight fishing using fluorocarbon. With this, I've only ever used it close in, so I'm only, I'm only casting you know, within sort of 50 yards, but it's, make, it's, made, a, it's made a notable uh, catch increase. So, you know, if you're fishing clean water venues and you want to try and improve your catch rates, whether you're match fishing or just pleasure fishing, um, have a nosy eye. Um, I, personally, I try and stick the sort of 12 to 15 pound when I'm doing this. Um, obviously, you can fish heavier if you, win, if you want to. Um, most of the time, I'm using the fluorocarbon. I'm using sort of between two and four ounce weights. Um, like I said, lobbing maybe 50, 60 yards at a max. Uh, so, that, obviously, that's another thing to consider. And... I think the, la the last thing we're going to really talk about here is bait. So this was probably the most controversial thing we talked about. What worm bait? Do you put a bit, a bit of mackerel on the end of it? Do you put a bit of squid on the end of it? So for me, without a doubt, is nice blow lug. And fishing them with these, these fine wire hooks is really important. Once you try and put a, a fresh blow lug on a thicker hook, you can really easily pop the worm and when it's out there you're just fishing a skin and obviously just fishing a skin instead of a, a juicy blow lug is you know the difference between catching and not um, I generally fish these where I'll get, a, get one about this but this is probably sort of a three inch worm body and then obviously a little bit of a tail and I'll ensure that the hook's very carefully comes through and out the tail and I'll fish them just as a single up the shank of the hook I find this the best bait for place fishing locally in Morecambe um, However, if I ask Darren, he has a completely different idea. Well, not a completely different idea, but a, but a little bit of a heated debate earlier. Fresh bait is arguably, you know, you can't argue with people that use fresh bait. I tend to like, I use frozen black. Um, I use half a worm. Um, the smellier, the better for me. Yeah. Uh, you do catch a lot of dabs on it, but yeah, the smellier, the better for me. Thread it up my line up to where my stop is. I use like half a worm. I do put a little bit of elastic around the middle of it just to stop it from sliding down and masking the hook. And like Chris said before, I do like to always tip it off with a strip of mackerel and I, I cut a long, thin strip, probably about that long, but a very, very thin um, strip of white mackerel belly. And I just hook it on so it's almost, if it's in the tide, it's, it's almost like a sand hill or something swimming. Again, it might not look like one, but in my tiny little mind, that's what I think it is. Do you think that might, might sometimes give you an edge where, you know, sometimes the place that they're sat where they're sitting and whatever you do, that, that sometimes they just don't want to move. Do you reckon that extra bit of scent in the water than anything, it just maybe tr trigger them to, to bite a bit more than just a standard fresh black look, for example? Yeah, a little bit of scent, more smell, a little bit of enticing, put tipping off with a bit of mackerel again if there's, if there's quite a lot of crabs there. You're going to get crabbed out they are going to take your worms off but if there's a little bit of squid or mackerel on it just gives you bait that little bit longer in yeah. the in the water to fish and contrary to belief we all know place flanders most flatfish are very predatory people think that they just eat worms they don't have had some stonking place on white bait yeah um so don't you know don't some people fish tiny little baits to catch a little fish yeah. i like it it's not a massive bait but i like something substantial so even if it scrubs out, it lasts a bit longer. Yeah, even a medium sized place. It's, it's, that's it might look big, but that's only two gulps yeah. and it's down. And that'll be washed out in no time anyway. It's not yeah. a lot, you know. Another key to fishing is I fish to a clock almost. I fish like 10, 15 minutes to check my bait. I don't yeah, I don't have a fag. I don't, well, I don't smoke. I don't go and talk to my mate for half an hour and then come back, ooh, I've not caught anything. It's because your bait's been washed out maybe 20 yeah. minutes or crab had it off 10 minutes ago. Yeah. 
So, you know, keeping on top of your baits and fishing more effectively is probably better, isn't it? It is that time of year, isn't it, where the crabs are coming into, yeah. in, into full force. You place fish, if there's crabs about, sometimes it's almost worth moving, moving position a yeah. little bit to come away from the crabs yeah. so your bait's in the water. So, I think we've all been in that place where we, we, we've thrown our baits and your tip wobbling instantly from crabs. They can strip, they can strip a bait like that in, in, in minutes. Um, and obviously if it's surrounded by crabs, you're probably odds on there's not going to be a place around trying to hit, hit your bait because one, they can't see it, one, and yeah. one, it's not there anymore within a few minutes. Um, yeah, so I think we've mentioned pretty much everything about the, the basics of place fishing there. Um, the one thing that we have haven't talked about too much is um, one thing that we all we all said is while we're place fishing, if we haven't had a bite for five minutes, is actually moving the lead slightly, disturbing the bottom. It just I, I just drag it like maybe six foot and then wind down so my tip's just touching my lead again. You know, it just causes a pull force and something like that. It might attract the fish, it might not, but I always seem once I've retrieved it within a few minutes, if the fish are around, I tend to get a bite. So yeah, any uh, questions on anything we've done today or anything else you want to um, ask us, um, please just give us a call um, or pop into store. Um, comments below in the uh, in subscribing class. I think we just had the mailman just turn up behind us, which is quite a comment. But um, he's, a, he's, a, he's an angler, he's in here pretty much every day. Uh, I'm sure he'll be picking our brains about this uh, after he watches it on YouTube later. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, thanks for your time and uh, any questions, just uh, drop us a message. Cheers, gents.